Hello guys, it's Carlton Black Ops King back once again for another one of my quick vlogs. This time of five minutes, I know I went 20 minutes last time, but it was something that we needed to talk about in a little bit more depth. Today, we're going to make it short and sharp. Um, and as per always, if you uh, would like to hear more, see more, press the button below. It'll give you an alert and please do subscribe. Right, let's get straight into it. Peter Kirkham, the former head of the um, Metropolitan Police's Police Federation, has basically spoken about the acting commissioner for the Metropolitan Police, who was basically at the scene when one of his officers was stabbed to death in Westminster. Now, what happened is, is that that acting commissioner closed the door in his car and drove off. Now, you will have seen today that the inquest has said that he's done nothing wrong. Right. You will also will have seen, maybe on one of the news reports, that it speaks to an officer who was actually the unarmed officer and who said that he had to, he put it, tactically withdraw, assess his options, what he's going to do, and see what he could do. And he was thinking about hitting the fellow with his baton whilst his colleague was being stabbed to death. Right. I, frankly, have no issue with either of those officers' acts. That said... If I were the officer, the senior officer there at that time, I would have gone in to try and defend my officer. Why? Because I wouldn't want my officers doing anything that I wouldn't do myself. That's by the by. But let's get to the real point. The elephant in the room. This is a man with two knives who knew exactly what he was doing, went to slit a man's throat, went to cut him down and to get into areas and to stab him in his legs, to areas where he could kill an officer even though he was wearing body armour. Why? Because British police are ineffectual, and I'll say it again, ineffectual in dealing with armed crime. Now, you need to understand this public. 96% of police outside of London are unarmed. So that means if something happens where a criminal carries a knife, an axe, a machete, a gun, a shotgun, anything like that, the police officer is trying to play catch-up. And his options are, one, go in and potentially commit suicide, or two, and this is what his police orders say for him to do, take cover observe the scene, report back, and await the assistance of an armed response vehicle. Now, all that sounds great, but when you figure that in many places in the United Kingdom, an armed response vehicle might be 20 minutes away, if not longer. Because if you're in some of the bigger counties, let's say Yorkshire, Lancashire, somewhere like that, Kent... Armed response vehicles are very few and far between, and by the time they get there, the crime's over and the individual's been allowed to kill people. Now, if he's a, a type of jihadi, he can kill people all day. He can literally, in 20 minutes, kill a 1,000 people, and the police won't be able to do anything about it. Let me give you one incident where this uh, in, uh, 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 happened. The two guys who stabbed and actually tried to chop the head off of um, that brave soldier... Uh, um, who um, didn't know what was going to happen. He was run over by a car, and then they tried to behead him. Unbelievable. Police were on scene, because they were called, within about two minutes of that action. Within about uh, six minutes, and I'm trying to get the figures exactly right, there were about 10, 12 police there. They put in a cordon and then had to wait for the armed response vehicles. Now, what that meant is that for, which arrived in, in, within 12 minutes to 13 minutes. So that basically meant for 11 minutes, these individuals could have gone on a killing spree and killed anybody around them. So we depended upon the good nature of what I would think are lunatics, that they only thought, I'll kill one person today and not kill 30, 40, 50, 60 other people. In fact, they gave an interview to the news media. And only when the armed police came did they go to take on armed police. Now, if these were like the everyday normal jihadi who we now have, they'd have been killing everybody. So I ask you, why do you think that's good enough? 
If you go to a dentist and the dentist says the day you need to put a filling in, he says to you, come back tomorrow when I have a drill, you'd say that dentist is unprofessional because he should foresee the fact that yes, 99% of people do not need to have the tooth drilled. But when they do need it, he needs to have the equipment there and then. He doesn't, shouldn't be waiting to call out for somebody to bring a drill to him. It's just not professional. If you ask any professional individual to do something for you, you expect him or her to have the equipment there and then to do the job. And that's all a gun is to police officers. A sidearm, that's a, a small weapon on the side, of, would have saved a lot of people's lives in Berra High Street example. So the first person who saw the four jihadis who went into Berra High Street and killed X amount of people and maimed many, many others, the first person who came across those four was a police officer from the British Transport Police, Northern Police in terms of BTP. That officer, a brave guy, went in to try and stop the four and was stabbed horribly and came away of his life. Okay? But it's all right saying he was stabbed horribly and did a great job and all the rest of it. But that's not the point, is it? The point is, is, is that those individuals, after stabbing him and getting rid of him, went on to kill and maim many other individuals because the police couldn't do their job. Worse still, that that officer who was stabbed and maimed, two of his colleagues came, so that's three police officers, came and pulled him away. That means that all of those officers in practically every other country in the world would have been armed, and listen to this, I'm saying it, practically every other country in the world. Don't just talk about America now. Practically every country in the European Union, police officers carry firearms. In fact, a part of the United Kingdom, known as Northern Ireland, whose crime rate is less than London by far, all of the officers in Northern Ireland carry, and that's a part of the, United, of the United Kingdom. Every officer has a sidearm when he does his duties. And those three officers would have stopped those four people killing people. This is what we're talking about now. It's not about some sort of pretense. It's real action. They are killing people. Now, that's to do with terrorism. If you just take normal crime, people carry out normal crime, what do they do? They go and rob a bank. They go and rob it. Why? They carry a weapon with them. Why do they do that? Because they know the police don't have any weapons. So they carry out armed crime with impunity. And the police can't do anything. This is not sufficient. Let me tell you something else so we get this right as well. You can go be in Austria. You can be in Japan. Okay? Last year in Japan, six people were shot. Every Japanese officer carries a firearm. And the Japanese police, the last time they shot a person, I, I can't remember. So it doesn't mean because you have a weapon that you're shooting people. It means you're capable of defending you, the public, and obviously the officers themselves. Without that, they are incapable of doing it. Now, what I'm going to say is, is this. The British police are probably the best in the world at command and control i.e. they get people to incidents very, very quickly. Because of CCTV, because of automatic number plate readers, you get people to events very, very quickly. But the problem then is, is that when you get people to events, they can't do anything because they're unarmed. And that just isn't sufficient. It's just not right. You should be able to cordon people with weapons so the person can't move out and go on killing other individuals. So this is what I'm saying. The days are over of pretense now. The public, the senior police officers, the more senior, don't want to tell you the reality. But notice when the most senior of police officers, the commissioner of police, albeit that he was acting, when the most senior of police officers is at threat, what does he do? He doesn't do what his men would do. Would, are doing, get out and fight, and fight the criminal. No, what he does is he locks himself in the car and drives off. Right? So he knows he is not fit for purpose. He knows he cannot protect the public. So why does he expect for 96% of his men to protect the public and women to protect the public when they have no weapons? It's not good enough. Go to Austria. Go to Germany. Go to Spain. Go to France. I can, keep, I can name you countries upon countries. And the last thing I will say on this issue. Because one is unarmed 
doesn't mean that you're policing by consent. It doesn't mean you have a more, uh, um, uh, what should I say, a less violent country. Britain is one of the most violent countries in Europe. Fact. Not made up. Fact. One of the most violent countries in Europe. All the other Europeans, with the exception I can think of, of, of Southern Ireland, all carry weapons. All of them. And their crime rates are way lower than in Britain. So don't let that fool you. Plus, it's not policing by consent. The other police, and I've policed all around the world, I've been to minimum half the countries in the world and worked with the police officers and their secret intelligence services. I will tell you that the Chinese example do not carry firearms. I'll say it again. The Chinese do not carry firearms. That does not mean that the Chinese police police by consent in any way, shape or means. The Indian police, as a general rule, do not carry firearms. It does not mean that the Indian police police by consent. What it means is, is the hierarchy don't trust them. That's the reality of not being armed. The fact that the hierarchy doesn't trust you. And I think that's the situation we've got in the United Kingdom, with the exception of Northern Ireland, of course, where the police do carry firearms. And by the way, let me make this clear to you. The police in London who do carry, the 4%, 5%, maximum maybe 6% in London, everywhere else, it's way down on that figure, draw their weapons way more than the police do in Northern Ireland. Why? Because there's way more crime in England, definitely in London, than there is in Northern Ireland. But all the Northern Ireland police carry. So what I'm saying to you is, is the obvious thing for police officers to do is to carry a sidearm. I'm not talking about carrying a machine gun everywhere. There's no need for it. There's no need for the everyday average police officer to be carrying a, a machine gun. No need whatsoever. That's for the specialist officers who turn up at a scene. The everyday normal police officer would have a sidearm, which you probably wouldn't even see, on his person so he could defend himself and the public if it comes to it. That's it. Finished. As they do in France. And I'll leave you with this. A jihadi last year came to, to uh, uh, attack the public. And I'm just using a jihadi, it could be anybody. Came to attack the public with a machete and a knife. A regular French police officer was there. He basically stopped that individual within a moment. And that individual never harmed anybody uh, uh, thereafter. He didn't kill him. He stopped him. Fired, told him to stop. Didn't. Fired one round into him. No members of the public were injured. Regular officer. Just like our regular customer, your regular beat officer. If you know Spain at all and you go into the Policia Local, the normal police officer who sits in the bar and has his uh, um, uh, uh, coffee and, 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 and a schnapps. Sits there and has a coffee and a schnapps. He's a regular officer. You see him if you go to Spain. A lot of, many of you do. You'll see him. He's a regular officer. Has the capability to defend himself and the public. It all, all comes on top. And that's what a professional police can do. Now, the British police let themselves down in, what, in this one area of protective policing. If it goes to investigative policing, we're amongst the best in the world. If it goes to command and control, we're amongst the best in the world. But all of that counts for naught if you can't defend your public. I'm going to leave you with that. Think about what I'm saying. Don't listen to the propaganda. Think about what you've seen on the news today, how a police officer has been stabbed to death when he didn't need to be, when his colleague could save him. His colleague said on the news today, he retreated. Take for that, run away. I'm not calling the officer down. But that officer couldn't defend his colleague. Remember, that means he can't defend you. So, that's it. If you want to have a discussion about this issue, please subscribe to me or write to me. Or, 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 or um, underneath, if you go low down, you'll see an area where you can put your comments. Um, I ask anybody to comment on this issue. Because frankly, you're not getting the police you deserve. Policing by consent is a, not a matter of being policing by unarmed. And please, when you equate the difference between police, do not use the United States. 
It is the worst of all examples. Why not use Luxembourg? Why not use Belgium? Why not use Japan? Use all of the police who carry firearms, who do not shoot people willy-nilly. In fact, they know if they shoot people, they'll be in court. Simple as that. Thanks very much. Hope you come back to me and see you next time.